All right, guys, welcome to the first episode of Wonders of Nature, uh, first episode of the podcast. Our first special guest is Adam Reagan. So uh, I think uh, what we should do since the first start of the episode, we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. Um, so go ahead, one of you guys start. Uh, I'll start. Uh, Brandon Payne, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, but I just relocated to Biloxi, Mississippi join the Air Force, and I'm currently in tech school for meteorology. So I'm Johnny Glessner. I'm from Northeast Ohio, around the Canton area. I've been chasing for about five or six years. And uh, my name's Adam Reagan. I've been chasing. I'm in my 11th year. I'm originally from Tennessee, but I moved to Norman, Oklahoma six years ago. Okay. Uh my name is Norman Smith. I'm the host of the uh, Wonders Nature podcast. Um, I've been chasing for roughly two full years, um, and I can't wait for more adventures to be had. Be Dean Barry. Uh, I'm out of West Central Pennsylvania. Uh, somehow became the godfather of equipment chase rig, and uh, the rig master. Yes, I've, I've been uh, chasing. Well, if you want to count crappy local stuff, I've been chasing since 1995, uh, 14 years old, and doing a little bicycle at first. Uh, uh, it's been a while. I, Damn, uh, I feel so inexperienced here. All y'all been chasing for yeah, way longer than I have. For, I've only been chasing for two full years so I, I got a lot of life ahead of me so but yeah it kind of feels weird especially like in the storm track server everyone's been chasing for quite a long time and i'm just sitting here the young guy just <laughs> inexper- more, mostly inexperienced just sitting here just learning stuff but i guess storm chasing is always a learning process there's always stuff to learn um it's not there's nobody perfect at it but that's what i guess what makes it fun so um let's just go ahead and talk about uh you know what was uh how did you guys get interested in weather? But Brandon, you got to start, man. Well, so I guess what started it was I was about five or six years old, and I was watching TV with my dad one night, and Twister came on. It's like AMC or something. And I saw that movie, got fascinated with it, started watching tornado videos as a little kid. And it was kind of nonchalant, kind of just like, you know, the obsessions that every little kid has until April 27th happened. And I lived about 15 minutes from Birmingham that day. And I went to Pleasant Grove the day after. And that's pretty much what kicked off my my passion for storm chasing and meteorology is what I saw in Pleasant Grove that day. It was... We lose somebody. Oh no, Johnny accidentally. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. but Good. April, pretty much April twenty seventh was a catalyst for me. That's what started it all. Um, and it's just been a, a burning passion ever since. I guess I'll go ahead and start mine. Um, it's it was a whole just a whole slew of things. I really don't know why I got like a passion for weather as I did. Um, but you know, I remember watching Twister when I was like three or five years old. Um, uh, my mom actually bought it from, uh, one of her coworkers so I could go watch it, um, and my little TV and I, I'd watch it almost every single day and still to this day, I still watch it quite a bit. Um, but an- another big, uh, moment for me was there was a local tornado that happened in September of 2010, um. It, it hit about 10, 15 minutes away from my house. Um, but going there, seeing the damage after the, you know, after it hit was pretty, it was pretty jarring and it showed me the dark side of tornadoes and what they can do. But, you know, it, it inspired me to go out and chase and, you know, <coughs> continue to warn the public. And, you know, ever since then, it's just, I, I've always had that passion for it. Yeah, those, those scenes of tornado aftermath are, they're, they're pretty surreal. Yeah, kind of stick. Well, it seems like a lot of people from your area. It's like you know, 
it's always it feels like April twenty seventh was a really big you know changer for a lot of people. You know, not even people that's you know came from a weather background. You know what I mean? It's like they've never really cared for the weather until you know April twenty seventh happened, um, and some other big events. I remember the Yazoo City tornado. There's Lee and uh, Storm Track. And if obviously you guys watch Storm Chasers where, you know, Reed and Joel pulled him out of the rubble, you know, it, I remember hearing his story for the first time on a, a voice call that day. And it was it was just crazy to hear that story. But um, John or Adam, you can go ahead. Well, what got me into weather was when I was seven years old, a very powerful, severe storm hit my hometown I'm from Crossville, Tennessee, originally. And what made this severe storm so unusual was that it packed baseball hell with it. And we just don't get that very often. And I remember my grandpa, he had me on our couch. He, he had pillows underneath me. I didn't see what was going on. It lasted for a good hour or so. And when I got up, I just noticed that my backyard was absolutely torn up, like, trees down uh some shingles got ripped off the roof of the house that i grew up in windows were busted um when i was nine years old i also went through the uh, superstorm in 93 a uh, very strong blizzard hit my hometown and then when i was 12 years old uh, i got to experience my first tornado well i didn't experience it but i experienced what it's like to have to take cover during a tornado. Johnny, go ahead. So uh, in 2006, uh, in June 2006, there were four confirmed tornadoes that happened about 15 miles, within 15 miles of my house. And uh, I was nine years old at the time. And just within the span of two weeks, just getting multiple days of, of tornado warnings and tornado watches, just that experience was just a lot of fun. Um, even having to like take cover and, and watch the storms, that to me was just so fun and fascinating. And then, of course, the movie Twister, um, I think that's the case for almost all of us, is uh, just seeing that movie just exposed me to the world of storm chasing and made me realize that that's like a real thing that people do and something that I wanted to do later in life. All right, Dean, you can go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't know if he was talking earlier, but I couldn't hear you. Uh, it looks like he's talking, but I can't hear him. Yeah, I, I can't hear him either. <clears throat> Is he actively chasing right now? <laughs> I, I, I've been chasing all day until just now, so I, I got home just in the nick of time. I tried chasing today, but I slept in too late. I missed twin water spouts in Pascagoula. Oh. I was kind of mad at myself for that one. <laughs> all right, Dean, can you hear us now? Or do you... very, it's very choppy. Oh. <clears throat> oh, can we hear him now? Go ahead. His video is like really clear. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear him. Me neither. There weren't a show without technical difficulties. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Oh yeah, there has to be something wrong, but. Well, I mean, uh, this this is this is a great great way to uh, iron out the kinks, you know, and oh yeah, I mean, get all that stuff taken guess, care of. I guess we'll never know who Dean really is. No, none of the viewers. Will <laughs> He's just. We'll never know dude. how Dean got into chasing. <laughs> I'm I'm still getting nothing from yeah, him. Yeah, I'm still getting nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can sense his frustration. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay. But at least there's some. There's a really good thing called Filmora editing software. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They'll, they'll never know this happened. I'll probably add some funny moments in there, definitely. But. Um, anyway. You're gonna have your work cut out for you. That's for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it gives me something to do. So. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So yeah. Gotta have bloopers. Oh yeah. 
I mean, that's what makes part of a show great, honestly. Just have some bloopers in there and you have some to have something for people to watch to watch them yeah. have a have a laugh at. But yeah, I was uh, thinking about chasing today, but I was just kind of you know caught up with work and all that jazz. But I seen you got a storm over uh, in Northeast Ohio, Johnny. Oh that? yeah, yeah. Chasing the uh, the good old lake breeze from Lake Erie. Uh, especially at this time of year, it's, it's it's always fun to chase the lake breeze. Um, it's not not much of a tornado thing, just a structure thing, really. But, um, you know, you get that breeze coming off the lake, and it just acts as an outflow boundary, basically. It just acts as a focusing point for storm development. And, uh, yeah, yeah, got, got a decent HP storm today. It wasn't a supercell. Um, I actually took my dad on first storm chase today's father's day actually yeah, happy father's uh, day when well, while we're recording well. this yes sir um but yeah i took my dad on his first uh, storm chase he liked it uh we had a good time um and then ended up heading back towards home and a new storm fired up and that actually was a legit supercell it started spinning and i got a great time lapse of it coming in so yeah all in all today just exceeded my expectations but then again my expectations are <laughs> <laughs> pretty darn low so yeah i, I, I mean i mean it's it's northeast ohio you you cannot you can't have high expectations you know so yeah i was like yesterday, it is what it is yeah i was like with yesterday was tyler storm he got that random tornado warn storm oh yeah oh that was like i, I was sitting here at home i was just like oh my god i just mm-hmm. got off of work i was like johnny oh. did you uh did you chase the uh bryant tornado a few days ago in indiana hmm <sighs> No, oh, no, you missed out <laughs> oh, on it. Oh no! Uh, I feel bad because. Oh my gosh, it's so tough, dude. We'll talk, because we'll, we'll talk. I about had to work. Day. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll go we'll go into that here in a second. But um, okay. I do want to talk to Adam because he is a special guest. But uh, you know, so we'll talk about you know let's talk about significant events. I mean, you know, it feels like everybody has a, their own story in their way, and there's always that one event that's always changed their life. I know Adam has an event that, you know, obviously don't want to talk about, and that's totally fine. But, you know, there's there's other events that, you know, we've all had um, that shaped our life in one way or another. But, you know, the chase that really shaped up my whole chasing career so far in my two years was uh, chasing Kim Colorado. I remember that day I was completely shitting on that day. I was saying on my Snapchat story and on Twitter that, Nothing's gonna happen. This is a stupid chase, but I'm just gonna go out and chase anyway. It's my last day out here. Might as well just do something. And I never got a tornado on my entire week uh, out in the plains from the 24th to the 31st. And uh, and on the last day, I managed to get a tornado, get two tornadoes that day. One in uh, Kim, Colorado, and one in Oklahoma that evening. And it, it was kind of a funny experience. I got a lot of crap and for that and. Uh, Oh, just because, like, I remember on Twitter saying, people retweeting my stuff saying, man, that aged well after my tornado post and stuff like that. But, you know, it's like that. Hey, it's the wonder of nature, I guess. I mean, you know. Uh huh. It is. Um, yeah. That was the <laughs> that was the day. That was literally the day yeah, I started going home from the planes. I was out for two and a half weeks. That was the day I started going home. I was I was way down, like almost to Mexico in New Mexico. And I was like, I'm not going to make it. So I just started going home, and I saw what happened. Ah, damn it. I missed it. <laughs> Dave, what year was Kim? Was that 2019? No, was tw- this was this year. Um, oh. Was last this month. year? Yeah. Yeah, that was a, oh, really, sh- yeah, that was that was a really big, good big, fat cone. I was on the tail end of my vacation yet. I didn't chase it because I was already exhausted from earlier that week. Yeah, same. Well, I was exhausted too. I mean, I drove from uh, south South Central Kansas that, that before that day already into uh, Texas. Well, I should say two days back, but then we drove clear into like like the Texas Panhandle, which is about a six hour drive. And the next thing you know, we I drove by myself to Eastern New Mexico. And I'm gonna tell you what I don't know about you guys, but if you ever driven in Eastern New Mexico, and I know Johnny has, it feels like you're driving like on a treadmill and you're not getting anywhere. <laughs> It's just like you're in, just in like, you're in like the same place for like several hours. That reminded me of my trip on I-70 from Salina to Kobe, Kansas. Oh yeah, same thing. And it's weird because it's like, 
in Kansas, I've never felt that way. In Oklahoma and Texas, I haven't felt that way. But New Mexico, it's like that place just hits different. I don't know what it is about. Like, what's so different about that state? Probably because it's so desolate. There's there's really not much, not much there. Um, like, there's not a whole lot of towns. There's not a whole lot of roads. Yeah. Uh, just kind of somewhat flat, rolling hills um, and little shrubs everywhere. Yeah, it, it, say, it's pretty desolate in that part of the state. Yeah, I will say one positive thing that comes out of New Mexico is the huge ass dust devils that come out of there. On the, <laughs> on my way to Colorado, I seen a huge one that came across the road, and I like the two cars in front of me like almost brake checked each other because there was that huge dust devil that came across the highway, and that was really interesting to see. And I, yeah. I jokingly said on Twitter, I was like, "Hmm, there was a huge dust devil cr- came across the road. I wonder if that's a uh, sign for later today." It actually, came out to be true, but. Um, yeah, I'll say Kim, Colorado was definitely the, my most significant chase and it's definitely the best chase I've ever had so far. Um, you know, it was my first planes tornado, uh, out in Colorado and I'll say I've been to Colorado before and it's probably one of my most favorite States in the entire United States. It's so beautiful. It's pretty awesome. There. You have the Rockies in the West and it's just East of Denver. It's so flat and desolate. And I actually have plans on moving out there in the next two years and finishing out my college degree out there. Uh, but, yeah, I'd say that's my most significant chase, but um, someone can go next. Well, I don't know if I can call it my most significant chase, but it was a life changer for me. It was my first tornado, the Good Friday tornado in 2009, the EF4 that hit Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Mm. Yeah, that was a... I remember watching video on that tornado and that thing. There is always, you know, I've always noticed a pretty stout difference between Dixie tornadoes and Plains tornadoes, even Midwestern ones too. It's like Dixie, of course, you have those uh, low LCLs from that high moisture that you get down there where you're right near that, near the Gulf of Mexico. And it's like with, you know, down there, you also get a lot of shear. So it's like, it feels like those tornadoes are hauling ass down there. And it's, you know, structure wise, it seems like they're way more violent than they are out in the Plains. Um, just because the the speed mo- the speed of it and the forward motion of the tornado itself, it just makes it look more meaner and more menacing to chase. I think the tornado. Well, what was that experience like? Well, before I saw the tornado, I was walking to a smoke shop that wasn't far away from the apartment I was living at at the time. When I got out of the when I got out of the smoke shop, I heard sirens going off. I ran back to my apartment, my weather radio was going off, tornado warning. And about 20 minutes later, I saw this big ass wedge hidden in trees, but I was able to see the top portion of it, got video of it, and like I said, it changed my life. It motivated me to, I've been wanting to storm chase for a long time. That event right there, that was like, okay, yeah, I wanna do this. One tornado is not enough for me. So you weren't chasing up until that point. You weren't even chasing that day. No. Huh. Interesting. Two years before I started chasing. Wow. wow. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. I mean, it's it's just it's what what a way to kickstart you know a chasing career by seeing a tornado. That's awesome. <laughs> Not a lot of people can say that. Um, That's if, true. That's true. You know, I, really, the only yeah. people I know on their first like their actual first chase that got a tornado was probably Reed. I remember him talking about uh, his first ever chase, and it was back on May 3rd, 99. And I'm going to tell you what, that is a oh. way to kickstart off of your chase career, seeing, a, just seeing that. Um, but, Brandon, do you have any uh, significant chases uh, so far? Um, I've had a few big chases. I've never scored a good photogenic tornado. My one true tornado was Bassfield last year. It was my first like actual chase i chased with marcus reynolds i'm sure y'all know oh yeah marcus yeah, yeah. yeah that was that was the day me and marcus met and uh i kind of kicked myself for it because he he wanted to take a more aggressive approach with it and get right up on it but seeing the velocity on it and seeing how close we were i kind of chickened out and so i shot south behind it so i i got to see it but it was rain wrapped. Like you said, like with those Dixie tornadoes, the, the LCLs were incredibly low. Like there's no way we w- would have been able to see it, even if there were, weren't a bunch of trees. So 
I would say Bassfield's probably my most significant just because of how significant that event was. Um, but I've had far better chases. Like I think it was May 25th of 2020, right on the Mexico border in Del, Del Rio and Comstock. We got a really good sculpted uh, HP Supercell. Got a pretty good shot of the mesocyclone on that one. And then I've had pretty good luck with tropical systems. Uh, Zeta, I think Zeta, Delta, and uh, what's this one's name? Claudette, the one yeah, that yeah. hit Gulf Coast yesterday. That was pretty fun. Um, I, I chased Laura, but I didn't make it to Louisiana because my engine blew up on me. Mm. So that probably could have been a pretty good story, but Hondas mm. don't, they don't make good motors. So mm. I didn't get to, I didn't get to fulfill that chase, but like I said, when we started, y'all are, y'all are way more seasoned than I am. I started chasing in 2020. Um, Bassfield was pretty much my first real chase. So I haven't had as much time to get, get those real good stories and get those good storms yet, but I'm sure, I'm sure they're coming. Yeah, in no, due I mean, time. Oh yeah. You just storm chase is all about patience. I mean, yep. some, sometimes, mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's hard for me to, grasp patience because i'm usually the person that usually wants things now and wants things right away but i've learned over, yeah you know the past this it's... past year you just got to be patient and i'll say my first plane strip definitely taught me that um oh for I, sure my yeah, plane strip was fresh it was unbelievably yeah. frustrating and you know it was like I, I kept telling myself deep down i was like you know just chase this one last time come on just just one, <laughs> one more one more one more and eventually paid off really well um but johnny I, I know, me and you've known each other for a while. Um, I know you've had some really good chases. I know last year's plane trip did not, uh, was not ideal for you. Hmm. <laughs> it was not ideal for most people. Yeah, for most people. <laughs> not just me. Uh, but, you know, this year, I'm going to tell you what, you really uh, did very well for yourself. But um, Oh, thank you. Yeah, and uh, name some of your most significant chases throughout your career. Well, um it's, it's funny funny you mentioned last year because I, I actually am going to start off with a chase from last year. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, I didn't get any tornadoes last year. Uh, that, that really sucked. Um, okay, you're not a woman. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, for real. I mean, 2020 was terrible. It was an yeah. awful year for chasing. Uh, but it, was, it wasn't that bad for structure. And, um, uh, not everybody is into structure, I guess. I love structure. Um, and uh, I'd, I'd have to say, first off, uh, May 21st, 2020, um, from uh, Lakin to Sublet, Kansas, that whole day was just, I mean, it, it had everything except a photogenic tornado. It, it had, I, I, I got about five supercells that day. Um all, all in that same general area. It's all modes, HP, Classic, LP, all different types. Uh, but that last supercell that formed near Moscow and moved up towards uh, Sublet, Satanta area. Oh my gosh, just that purely insane structure, the kind of structure that you don't get, you know, very often out yeah. there. Like, even without tornadoes, I felt like that was a legit, uh, legit planes day and that was the first time I, I really got to experience like the full power of the great planes and just how much better it is chasing out there um, but I would have to say like in terms of tornadoes um, I, I mean I've been chasing for five six years but I haven't really seen photogenic tornadoes until this year and that's mostly because I live in Ohio because Ohio sucks yeah. but um I, I would, oh man, it, it's it's really tough. I, I would have to pick between Earth, Texas on May 16th or Selden, Kansas on May 24th. Man, I, I, I would have to go with Earth, Texas on May 16th because that day we did not expect tornadoes at all. I mean, I, my initial plan was to sit in post uh, southeast of Lubbock, Texas and just catch like a, a sunset supercell near I-20. And um, ended up repositioning, just looking at mesoanalysis and kind of figuring some things out. And I was with a couple other chasers, and we noticed some moisture convergence happening. And um, a really, you know, isolated cell started blowing up in that area. 
and it wasn't the perfect place for it to go up or like, all right, we'll just have to take what we can get. We chase this storm ends up becoming this beautifully sculpted LP supercell. And then just decides to drop a fantastic tornado. And I, I got this incredible shot of the whole tornado with the, the LP structure all the way up to the anvil. And that was my first time getting a legit planes tornado. And yeah, I, I, that, that will never be, a chase that I forget because it was phenomenal yeah. and not a whole lot of people were on it either. I'm pretty proud of that. So. Oh yeah. Not a lot of people were, I remember, uh, I remember, okay. So <laughs> I just want to talk about the, the, uh, Selden day. That was uh-huh. the day I was driving out and I'm going to tell you what I was like, eh, you know, it was just like, maybe nothing will happen. It was just like a 2% mm. it wasn't really anything crazy. And then I seen a tornado watch go out and I'm in Eastern Kansas. I just got out of Kansas city. I'm like, Oh my God, I might actually want <laughs> to make this. And then I seen tornado warning, tornado warning. I'm seeing the pictures coming. I'm like, oh my gosh. Which I mean, <laughs> I couldn't do anything about because graduation was the day before and I couldn't miss out on graduation. Right, right. You know, so I, I'm kind of aggravating and missing that out, but I understand I probably couldn't get to it either way. But I definitely did redeem myself, however. But um, yeah, I would say Earth, Texas. I remember watching your video. You posted to LSM and you were crying that that day and you know, legit legit yeah. i i was like i'm about to cry <laughs> so, oh my gosh it was glorious it looked like was a kick in the nuts dream. for me really i thought you i thought you didn't chase that day for some odd reason i don't know why i thought that but i had to take my chase partner back to norman okay mm. so did you position right. south or what was your experience that day like no, I didn't chase it all that day. Oh, I was okay. heading. Oh. I was heading back home. Rip. Oh, okay. Well, you know, it, I don't know if you guys ever noticed this. Um, I, I'm sure Adam's got this feeling too. But uh, especially on the Kim day, you know, I, I was sending pictures in uh, to the Severe Weather Ohio group that me and Johnny's in. I was sending like the pictures of it, you know, just being outflow dominant. It didn't really look anything too impressive. I, and I literally said in that group chat, you know, I'm about to just head back home. I already had the GPS navigation already set to James's house, and I was going to go stay the night there. Um, oh, oh there he is. hey, look who's there. Nice. Also, is he actually working this time? Yes, also, amazing background. We like to see that in the podcast, episode one. Gosh. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Glad to have you back, Dean. Yes, glad to have you back. Oh, oh man. This so, does not represent the DOD. So, um, go ahead and explain that your story. Yeah, go ahead and uh, explain your story. Ex- go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Well, um, my, uh, my interest began when I was I was just seven or eight years old. Um, my father used to own a cabinet shop, and we were on the way back from doing an installation job because um, in the eighties you just took your kids to do your job with you, and um, we were uh, we were sitting in traffic in Chesterfield, Virginia, and everything happened all at one time. It was a beautiful day. And uh, all of a sudden, it was green outside, and then it was black outside at 3.30 in the afternoon. um, Some air raid sirens that were on some poles over by us started going off. Literally less than 10 seconds later, a very visible condensed funnel moved across the highway in front of us and threw the car that was in front of us into a side lot and then went on through a field ripped the roof off of a storage building and kept on going through the trees. I had no idea what that was, but getting the 10 miles home that day was um, extremely difficult and interesting because every road was closed. There were trees all over everything, trees through houses, trees through cars. And we get home and um, 
It had left our camper completely alone. It left a coffee mug sitting on top of a fence post completely alone, but broke a bunch of windows and ripped the front door off the house. So, of course. Of course. That was, that was when I got interested in it. Yeah, and, you know, it, it's like, I also want to talk about, I know Dean hates this day, um, but this story always fascinates me because I always like going back and watching old tornado videos and, you know, I'll also say, I also forgot to put this into my introduction, but uh, my grandfather was actually uh, working for a road company. He used to do paving, and he was actually out in Xenia on the 74 F5. Uh, mm. Yeah, and uh, I remember him telling me that story when I was really young, and that also, you know, kind of kick-started my, you know, interest a little bit. But he remembers seeing, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this video, actually, I, you probably do. Um, it was a video of the uh, Xenia tornado. It was the non-condensed, like, with the sub vortices going around the uh, outer side of it. Yeah. I remember him directly telling me that was what he saw when, you know, it just looked like damage just looked like an atomic bomb went off. But, you know, yeah. it's like that story will always forever be in my you know, be in my memory. And, you know, but, you know. Anyway, Dean, I remember you uh, chasing on the La Plata day. Um, and that tornado was really wild, too, because – Considering how, you know, I would say inactive we are compared to the plains, we don't get these very common violent tornadoes, you know, like what Alabama, Mississippi, or Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas does. But, um, you know, it, it's very rare to see these, you know, mid-Atlantic, these northeastern uh, violent tornadoes. But, Dean, if you can go ahead, uh, explain that day for us. Well, that was a while ago, quite a while ago. Um that's when I learned that uh, being an impatient chaser can cost you opportunities. But uh, that day, I was actually out in Northern Virginia that day and um, faced severe warm cells from the West Virginia border all the way into Northern Virginia ac across to the east. And they kept dying out, coming back, and they were pretty persistent, though. And we get to the Potomac. It it didn't it didn't have the appearance of a storm that had itself together. Um, it, it looked like it was dying, um, like it was collapsing. And you get to the Potomac River there, and people think about a river. You know, you you have an idea of what you think a river looks like in your mind. But when you get to that part of the Potomac River, it's not that. You can't see the other side of it. It looks like the ocean. Right. And um, so I, I'm sitting there like either I'm going to have to go north into Washington, D.C., a ways to get a bridge to get over, or I'm going to have to get on a ferry. And this thing just looks like it's falling apart. So I said, you know what? It's dying. I turned around and went home. It strengthened itself over the Potomac River and um, destroyed La Plata, Maryland. So it just came on shore, dropped the tube, and destroyed La Plata, Maryland. So I didn't find a ferry or a bridge that day. I went home and I ate Burger King. And, um, yeah, that, that that's a little bit of a lesson in prediction and a little bit of a lesson in impatience because, number one, I was impatient, but number two – I didn't predict that that thing was going to get a second life, but it, when it went over the Potomac, it sure enough did. Yeah, and I've always theorized where, of course, I live right near the Ohio River. Um, I've seen a lot of storms over the past several years, you know, just look like absolute trash. Like, they don't have themselves really organized or, you know, and it's just kind of like whatever. But it's like right when it crosses that river, or if it rides parallel with the river, I remember on June 10th uh, last year on that moderate risk, uh, I got that supercell near my house. And it was really weird with that storm because there was another storm coming in behind it, and I would figure, I'd figure like, okay, well, you know, it's just going to go outflow dominant, and it's just going to crap itself, and you know, whatever. And you know, as I was following up the river, it just kept going, you know, right along the river where I was, and it kept maintaining strength as it was, you know, as the source of inflow was getting impeded. And it was just kind of really weird to watch that happen, but. You know, it's like I always theorize when storms go across the river or they're riding near a river, they're always they always either maintain strength or they always gain a lot of you know strength from that. And I don't know what why that is, but I don't know if that's I don't know if that's ever been like a scientific uh, 
I don't know if ever like research has ever been done on that or not, but I think it's some sort of diurnal effect. Maybe. Um, well, I don't. I don't know if it's like additional moisture. Um, if it's some sort of orographic thing, I can't imagine it's orographic because rivers don't typically have that much, you know, terrain uh, lift to, you know, provide that lift. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's not something I've looked into. Maybe it's something you should look into when you study meteorology. Hey, maybe I don't know. Um, yeah, I know some storms off of Lake Erie. They can get going pretty fast. Um, I've seen a lot of storms, you know, just watch them brief on radar, and <clears throat> blips to like, you know, overshooting tops and some, you know, special, and then they go special marine warned within the next 10, 15 minutes. But that's always, yeah. that's always fascinated me, fascinated me, you know, just living in Ohio and living near a river. But yeah, I, I've seen a lot of storms and, you know, Kim was a good exception, you know, just looks like trash, just like, man, eh, I'm just going to go leave. But, you know, I've always noticed you know, there's always those storms that, like, look really good, but then you also have those storms, like, you know, I don't know if you're experiencing this, experience this with Selden, but uh, they always have that look to them, like, okay, this is about to get serious. Like, we're about to see a tornado. And I kind of oh, yeah. Yeah. I had that feeling with Kim. Like, I I seen that uh, RFD cut start to come around. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is this is going to be it. And I've never had that experience with every other Super Bowl show I've seen. I've never had that ex- feeling. But, yeah, it it. That's why you know, it's just like it's very interesting. Uh, I can't wait to go out there on my second plane trip. And that was like, that's definitely a chase entirely that I'll never forget. But. Oh yeah, I mean it, you you know like you know when a storm's about to produce a tornado. Um, some sometimes they may surprise you, but uh, usually like the big photogenic tornadoes. You know, I mean. Um, I'm I'm sure Adam can really attest to that. I mean, he he's seen a lot of tornadic storms. He's seen a lot of tornadoes, uh, a lot more than any of us have. Uh, but it's just because it's fresh in memory. Yeah, Selden, absolutely. Um, Selden produced this massive, massive inflow tail, and you can just see it just screaming into the the center part of the of the storm. And you know, you just know, you see that, and you're like, okay, there's the streamwise vorticity current, you know, right. and there she blows it's it, yeah it just started going nuts after that inflow tail formed and it was huge it was massive i'll say one chase i'm very uh very jealous of i couldn't make it out to was uh mccook nebraska in 2019 that adam got, mm. that was a fantastic tornado so adam go ahead and explain that I, i'll say from my from my point of view or at least my opinion that was some of the best tornadoes that you got uh the mccook day well, the funny thing about that was my my original target that day was Meet Kansas. Mm-hmm. I was looking at Southwest Kansas. My chase partner, on the other hand, he was like, I want to go to Nebraska. And I was like, okay, well, he's my only ride, so I kind of compromised and said, screw it, let's go. And uh, uh, we made it just in time. Wow. Now, have you guys ever? Uh, I'll say, have you guys ever met like any chasers out in the field? Um, I'll say one experience I've had was I, within the past week, I was out there. I met a lot of people I was not expecting to meet, from Pecos Hank to Daniel Shaw. That was a real, that was a really good couple of days there. But do you guys ever had any experiences out there seeing other chasers? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, like when, when you're on the plains every, in May, I mean, everybody's out there. Everybody's right, right. there, uh, especially like on days like uh, on May 26th um, of 2021, uh, that big moderate risk bust that ended up producing all the fantastic tornadoes up in Nebraska that like two people saw. Um, there were, I would have to say, every single parking spot was filled at the Scott City Loves gas station in Scott City, Kansas. And literally everybody was there. I mean, everybody was there. The racks pole was there. Everybody was there. I mean, it was it was insane. Um, pretty sure we ran them out of gas at one point too. So <laughs> yeah, like it's just it's just a it's it just happens. Like when you're there, um, and everybody else is there too. You know, um, it was such a frustrating day, May twenty sixth. Oh yeah, yeah. No. Well, we 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 can get into that later, if not right now. <laughs> oh no, let's might as well just get into it now. That day was. Me, it was very, it was very iffy. Like that day was, 
I chased with Marcus Reynolds for part of my chase. And I'll say shout out to Marcus Reynolds. We need to get him on the podcast sometime. He's a really fantastic chaser and a, and a good person overall. Great um, dude. Yeah, he is. And, you know, that day we were in Hayes, Kansas. And I hate to say that because I obviously know what happened in Hayes. But, you know, what? For just forget about it. Uh, but anyway, and nobody saw that coming, though. That's no, the problem. No. And that happened like 10 minutes away from the hotel, too. And that was pretty sad. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um. We were uh, at a Super 8, and we decided to get IHOP or whatever. And it was just right across the uh, street. Because, like, it's basically from the IHOP. It separated, like, the I-70, just, like, the little underpass I-70. So we went to IHOP, and there was this Comfort Suites that was uh, right behind the IHOP. And we just got done eating, forecasting, blah, blah, blah. And what was crazy, and this is why I also hate about that day, our original target that day was McCook, Nebraska. That was originally what we were going to set. Me and Marcus were set on it. And then at that IHOP, we're kind of like, you know, Southwest Kansas or Central Kansas looks really good. And I'm kind of sitting over here like, I don't know. Nebraska looks really good, too. And he's like, I don't know, man. We're kind of iffy. But I was, we were kind of just like, Southwest Kansas, fine. We didn't want to argue or anything. But we made our decision. We were about to head out. And we seen this new Toyota RAV4 set in the the underhang of the uh, Comfort Suites. And I didn't think anything of it. And I seen the decals, the tornado decals and all the sticker decals. And I'm like, that's a chaser. And Marcus didn't realize it. Well, a dude came around, really tall dude with boots and jeans, came came around the uh, car. I'm like, gee, I wonder who that is. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, who is that? I wonder. Wonder, wonder who. Yeah, and it was Peckers Hank. And we talked that day. And uh, what was crazy about that day was I subscribed to his Patreon that morning in the hotel. So that was pretty interesting, but we talked for a little bit. That was really cool. But I mean, I made up for kind of, kind of made up for that day. I intercepted that supercell uh, later in the day in Kansas. That had that really nice mothership appearance to it. Um, didn't produce a tornado, but it was really nice. Almost got stuck in the mud, and I've never told anybody that story. My car was entirely almost in mud, and you might think, "Well, why'd you take the road?" Well, funny enough. We were trying to get uh, east of it. It was it was more propagating more north that time, and I seen this road. And of course, for me, I don't like a lot of people. I usually, especially like in person, I don't like a lot of people. Um, I usually try to focus on more just myself or just my other chaser chasing partner. Um, but we were <laughs> we were trying to find road. And every road was packed, and we found this one road on the side. I'm like, okay, finally. So I was on the inter- on the walkie. I was like, I'll pull over in here. He's like, okay. We got close to it, and I was already turning in, and I was just seeing gravel for about a foot, and then just mud. I'm like, oh, no. And, of course, by then, I was already turning, so I had to take one for the team, more than likely. Uh, you know, so I got stuck in the mud there for about 10 minutes, and I was, like, about this close from getting out, and I couldn't just wedge out. There was other chasers, like, right across the road, but I managed to get out. Uh, I found a little grass patch, and I managed to weave my way out of there, but, yeah, that day was... That day was very rough. Um, I wouldn't say it was a complete bust. I could have definitely got those tornadoes in Nebraska if I stayed on my target. But seeing that supercell, that was also really nice. But, yeah. I know. Uh, I remember I was talking to Daniel Shaw after that day in Turkey, Texas. We all met up. And he was really frustrated about that day. I mean, almost everybody busted that day. I, I really didn't see it coming, to be quite honest with you. Oh, um, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody did. Um like it was one of those one of those setups where we're like, okay, all right, well, you know, finally we have a day where it's like we can probably expect tornadoes. So, yeah, just just one of those days. Um, Adam, were were you out that day? Yeah, Garden City was my target. Gotcha, Garden City. Yeah. Well, yeah, we we started in Scott City, passed through Scott City four times, just back and forth, had no idea what to do. Oh, Ended up yeah. going south to Dodge City, found a supercell for. One minute and then it died. So yeah, it's like all the storms that initiated um, in that in western Kansas. I remember I was on the sto- I forget what it was, but it, it was a storm popping up northwest of Scott City, um, and every by Leota, yeah, uh, yeah, and everybody was on that. I mean, everybody was on that. Me and Marcus was trying to get out ahead of it. Um, almost, we were sliding around in mud roads, like sw- swarming <clears throat> in and out of mud roads, and it felt like we were like, and you know, we felt like we were mud running in the middle of the country, and it was just a really fun experience, um, and all. But 
I remember passing up Aaron J. Jack and uh, Peckers, Hank, and Skip Talbot actually were together, I'm pretty sure, on that day. We passed him up a couple of times. Um, but, you know, it's like every soldier that developed, it looked really good for about the first 10 minutes, and then it just kind of just died out. But um, it, it was a re that was a very rough day in terms of forecasting. I remember going up in northwest Kansas by Selden just like five times, just either like contemplating on staying there because I got the morning supercell that day, and we were contemplating on just like, well, should we go stay here? Should we go south? And we were just all over the place. But that day was definitely rough. And all. Sure was. Yeah. Now, uh, for that week, did you guys chase the 27th by any chance? I wish. Mm. I was down in I was down in Texas. Where did you chase? Me? Yeah. Um. Well, I uh, started in Dodge City that morning, and my thinking was uh, to drop into Oklahoma. Uh, and and just chase whatever happened in Oklahoma. My my expectations were like bottom of the barrel. I was also extremely pissed off from the day before too, um, but ended up just kept like just kept going further south. Um, ended up outside of uh, I think Hollis, Oklahoma. Um, actually, no, we, we we were just west of that in Texas. Um, I, it's just that that day, like it was a sell happen day, just just sell after sell. Think, um, I honestly don't even remember. Like it, we we hopped on so many different cells that day, I couldn't even keep track. Ended up finally seeing the Silverton cell, um, only for it to do the same thing Dodge City did the previous day. When I got there, it started dying. I mean, I got some time lapse, got a sunset, but yeah, that yeah. was that was kind of a frustrating day for me as well. Yeah, and it seemed like this that week in particular, the last week of May, was just so hard to forecast. It was so hard. Well, e even then, like even if you did a good forecast, it it, it wouldn't matter because Mother Nature just didn't cooperate. Like that that entire that entire stretch was almost all bust for me, except for the the twenty fourth, Selden, oh, and yeah. then um, what else was there? They were all busts. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> it, was, it was mostly high plains crap. Um, I, I had one. My last chase was on the twenty eighth in New Mexico. I had like a a, a dust eating supercell. Oh, it was I insane. That. Yeah, that was yeah. Really, that was really awesome though to see that. I remember I was in Roswell that day. And I I'm pretty sure I seen Simon Brewer at uh at one of the gas stations there. I didn't want to go up and say hi because I was kind of like I'm, I wasn't sure who if that was him or not. Um, but yeah, I you know that day was really. Gotta cool. say to hi to your fellow Ohioan. Come oh, on, man. Yeah, I know, but um, I've I've had some bad history of like thinking of someone was that certain one that, that I knew. And Fair like, enough. Yeah, hi, and they're like, "Who are you?" And I'm just like, "Oh," but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that day was really cool too. I've always wanted to, wanted to go to Roswell. I'm a big history nerd, and I've always loved the fascinating history about Roswell. Um, so just. Not from a non chasing point, that was really awesome to go see that. Um, but I remember yeah. chasing that day, there was that five, I think it was a five percent that day, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, the, I, there was like three supercells all heading southeast, and I could see the mezzo. I actually have a picture of all the three mezzos from those storms, and it's really cool to see. Um, that day, I really thought there was gonna be a tornado with that first tornado warn storm. Mm -hmm. That was that looked really impressive on radar, and I really thought to myself, okay. We're about to see our first planes tornado. Um, there, it was hard though because it was way, way back in the mesas, and it was hard to see, hard to get any ground confirmation. Um, yeah. Just a lot of your, your your typical wall clouds that gets mistaken as a tornado. Basically, I don't think there was a tornado that no, day, there unfortunately. Was. I don't think there was. Um, but yeah, that that was a really cool day. I'll say the Mamata show after that that stole the show, in my opinion. That was that was pretty cool. sweet. And you, and you know from you know to Dean to you know, Johnny, it's just like, we don't really get a whole lot of good Mamata shows. It's all covered up by trees and a bunch of junk. Yeah. Yep. It's nearly, it's nearly impossible. It's nearly impossible in the Northeast, uh, to, to get your clearances. I mean, on, um, you know, we're, we're talking about, Johnny was talking about seeing the inflow whipping in on one of the storms earlier. Uh, and that that will forever be etched in my mind um, 
on Shelby Day back in early 2019. Yeah, yeah, Shelby, yes. When we're, oh, yeah. we're that was my know, first tornado. The really? trees were just, the trees were just so awful. The yeah. terrain would have been fine if it wasn't full of those trees, but they were so thick and everywhere. So what else can you do other than than guide off of guide off of threat net and just park on the side of the road right in front of the base and then hop oh, yeah. a mile up the road to let the rotation pass through where you were just sitting. Mm-hmm. So the ghost train is screaming out of the trees fifty yards to the left. Oh my I gosh. Mean, standing in it. You just watching pieces of straw go through the air like missiles and it's half a football field away like and you yeah. can't see it you can't see the actual tornado it ugh, it was so frustrating i think that it was visible in the in the one grab from that video you took yeah. i think that we were seeing was the top of it but oh yeah yeah but you, you can barely tell the storm was so messy and with the trees and everything yeah, ch- chasing here is it, it's frustrating. Not as bad as Dixie. Dixie's a whole nother level of frustrating. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure Brandon can definitely attest to that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to really um I'm gonna have yeah. to take a look into it and pull my footage. But the dash cam footage from that day, I think when we went to turn around. Mm-hmm. I, I believe what we were I believe what we were seeing is that main area rotation was actually RFD. And I think Oh yeah, that, yeah. I think that off to the right from our viewpoint where we were sitting off to the right was the main column. And I think I got it on video. I, I remember seeing that the other day when I was looking at some old videos. So I gotta get a grab of that because we might have just drove right past it. Like it uh, was- yeah, well I think at our closest point, I think we, we were probably uh when we were on that exit and just north of that exit, I think at at the most or I should say at the least, we're about a mile from it. Yeah, if that. And it, it, if that, yeah, you're right, you're right. I mean, but that, that, the whole RFD rear inflow section of that was just cranking. I mean, it was, it was insane. And it hit like a brick wall, too. That, oh, yeah. That, yeah it's, that, it, was, it was dead giveaway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That Shelby day was, I know that for a lot of you guys, that was a really good chase, but for me, that was an awful chase. That was my first ever chase. Uh, was on the Shelby day. Um, I remember there was a ten percent out for right over my house, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like this, okay, we're this is gonna be my first chase, and I'll be, you know, this is the, this is when I have my permit. So I, my mom or whoever it was on that day had to drive me around. Yeah. But of course, when everything looked okay, but like until it right when uh, it went towards Huntington, that main line hit to Huntington, everything just went alpha dominant, and it just went to yeah. dunk. And I'm like, "Oh my gosh." And yeah. then it was driving. Then it was driving in soup the rest of the way back home. Yeah. Um, now, the funny thing is, you guys are talking about May in the Plains, uh, and everybody went out went out to May in the Plains. I think, think of, it was either Johnny or Norman. I think it was you, Norm. But you asked if I was coming out. You're like, is are you going to be out here this year? And I just sent you back a picture of a really greasy hand holding a broken CV axle. And it was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. And I was telling Adam, uh, we were chatting before the show started. Um, you know, he was saying he, he repaired his vehicle because uh, nobody wants to be chasing the planes in a vehicle without working air conditioning. Um the, the, the repairs on, on my car, every year it always seems like something. Yeah. So last year I was going to go out. COVID had everything screwed up. Yep. The year before I was going to go out, wife broke her leg. Um, you know, and this year going to go out, had the money saved, and the car required $4,000 worth of repairs. Ooh. Ow. Oh so man! <laughs> now that's it's rough. One thing I have been considering: I have never chased. Well, if you count Southern Kentucky as Dixie, then maybe. But I've never really chased Alabama, Tennessee, um, Mississippi. I've never chased that. But however, I think towards the end of this year, that's probably going to change. If, if you know, I'm going to start college this fall. But um, 
Yeah, if I can work something out, I'd love to. I'd like to also chase hurricanes. Chase like I'd love to be down in the Carolinas right now chasing the feeder bands of Claudette. I would love to chase hurricane tornadic setups. Those are always fun. I know it's hard, but like, you know, it's Dixie tornadoes. I've I've always wanted to experience a Dixie tornado, but you know, I'm ready for what Dean's about to say. Oh no. You know how I can you know how I can tell you've never chased QLCS tornadoes in the inflow bands of a hurricane? Hmm. Because you want to. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you he's, he's got a he's got a point yeah. he's got a point that 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 shit is hard to chase i mean it's yeah. just it's frustrating that is where i cut my teeth with a lot of this stuff actually doing stuff in the field is mid-atlantic hurricane season doing all this stuff uh you know was mentioned in vehicles without working ac my God, man, calendar privilege. Let me let, let me talk about calendar privilege for a second. <laughs> um, in 1999, uh, I went out for Hurricane Dennis. And I was driving a, a Jeep CJ7 that was older than I was, and nice. it didn't even it didn't even come from the factory with air conditioning. Oh. So, tropical intercept with no air conditioning in a Jeep that. I put the uh, fiberglass hard top and the steel doors back on it, especially for this intercept, because I didn't want to be doing it with a bikini top and no doors. Oh, of course not. So we wound up holding up in a hotel, and that was an experience, but at least the hotel room had working AC until the power went out. Um, Hurricane Isabel in uh, 2003 did that one with a 1984 Ford Bronco also with <sighs> um, you're just sitting in a fog box and you're wiping the inside of the windshield off with a towel, with a towel while you're trying to drive <laughs> and then you're dodging yep. circulations coming back in. Yeah. You, that brutal. It, it mm. is. It's horribly, horribly brutal. I haven't had AC since last summer. I know you're pain. Oh man. No, I, I just won't do it anymore. I just this the air conditioning system in the car goes out, and it's like, oh, I guess we're buying a new car. Um, the the thing too, um, God, what was it? Uh, it was late 2018. Late 2018, uh, the remnants of Florence. I want to say it was Florence caused a tornado outbreak where I grew up and I was up here, uh, but it caused a tornado outbreak where I grew up actually uh, killed uh, one person in, hmm. in Chesterfield County, Virginia, one person. And this was a guy that my dad knew that used to come over our house when I was a kid and everything. Like I, I knew this guy. Um, so dodging these things is, it's insane. When, yeah. when you're actually trying to do it uh, that's that was that was my my piece that was that was yeah no you haven't done it yet because you still want to <laughs> <laughs> well it's like i with those tornadoes i mean like it i mean tornadoes period but it's like with especially with those tornadoes it seems like the the, the general public always gets the best you know shots of those tornadoes and it's just like really like come on we drove like eight sure. hours they do <laughs> Well, they do because you don't really have chaser footage from those. It's like you rarely ever see chaser footage of tornadoes from this region up here. Right. They, on Philby Day, the only tor the only actual footage of the you know. His footage and my footage. That's pretty much it. And then yeah. just locals. Yeah. The, the only the only actual footage of the tornado on Shelby Day was shot by a uh, a normie and <laughs> where they shot it which it turned out to be some grungy wedge looking thing where they oh, shot yeah, it, it was a wedge was just like their front yard like oh this is killer check this out hey, <laughs> there, there's a video of this kid like this this cringy kid that's out just like just a local kid he's just out uh, i don't even, he was making a video yeah, about, yeah, you know I what video I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I yeah. can't, oh my gosh, it's so, it's so frustrating because you listen to this annoying kid and you're like, seriously, 
Like, this kid had a better angle of the storm than I did, yeah. the professional chaser here. Like, come on, man. <laughs> so frustrating. Well, and that's, I think that's due to, I think that's due to, to like, to, to, to region and to knowledge. Like, you know what you're looking at. I know what I'm looking at. And you know what it can do. So you try not to be directly underneath of it unless you just happen to be off of an exit ramp on Route 30. And, you know, mm. it's, it's the, uh, October 2nd, 2018, there was a tornado in Crawford County, Pennsylvania. It was the yeah. um, Taylorville tornado. And I set up on that in what should have been a good position, a two-mile line of sight and everything else, and it was not visible. You could see the wall. You could see the rotation. But you had to do a ton of editing to even be able to pull the tornado out of that soup. Meanwhile... Meanwhile, there's somebody standing in the yard of a farm aiming the camera across the street at a nursing home getting destroyed. And like, oh, look at this. Of course. The, the calmest thing in the world. Um, mm -hmm. going back to going back to that uh incident in central Virginia after Florence's remnants came through with that tornado outbreak, there was plenty of video. And it was all shot by people who didn't know any better. It was shot by two guys who were standing well inside the kill box with debris raining out of the air. It's dropping chunks of two-by-fours into the parking lot 10 feet from him. He's like, oh, wow, it's a tornado. You know, like... <laughs> it's, it's all vertical video, too. It's never, never yeah, landscape. Yeah. Always vertical. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's like, it, it, either that or it's like, there's always... You have those experienced Dixie chasers like Brenda Deer or Brandon Kopik. I remember before I've ever met Brandon Kopik, I actually met him on the uh, recent chase uh, a couple days ago. But, you know, it seems like I've always noticed, like, I'm like, damn, who's this Brandon Kopik guy that's always getting these random ass Dixie tornadoes and always getting these, you know, hurricane feeder band tornadoes? I'm like, this man's always on everything down in Dixie. Um, but, yeah, I'll say. He also wants to get on the show, so he, we'll probably get him on an episode here sometime soon. More Ohio people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, no. Well, the funny funny thing is, is uh, I know he was joking. It was actually done in a very joking manner, but um, on on uh, April 19th, uh, or was it 14th? It was 19th, I can't remember. I think. No, no. It was April. It was, it was April 14th, 2019. Oh, okay. Or 14. Okay. Back in April of 19, when we were out there, when I logged into the Skywarn net out there in Ashland County on the uh, ham radio, Brandon Cope, it came up on there and told me to go back to my territory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, but this, this happens when you, when you chase in non-traditional regions. I know that from uh, Tennessee, he's, he's got to have some stuff from like early career that just like, you could swear it's there, but it's a stand of trees at a mountainside and then some normies on the other side with a camera phone, just like, Oh, what is that? You know? Yeah. Yeah. With uh, and one of my out. favorite tornado videos of all time are from just a regular local. Um, it was on, what was it? June, uh, June 16th, 2014 happened in a not at all well-known town of Pilger, Nebraska. Um, but it was actually the, the Wisner tornado specifically. Um, there's this guy, um, recording the Wisner tornado, just this massive stovepipe slash cone wedge, whatever you want to call it. Just beautiful. And the sound of it, the roar is insane. And then it moves off and then you can see the tornado in the back, the other twin going and the video is just phenomenal. The dude's not talking. The frogs are croaking, the birds are chirping, and you just hear the roar of this violent tornado. And it's just a normie. But it's in landscape. That's why it's the hey, best tornado yeah. video of all time. Is this one right here? Hold up. Uh, that might be it. Let me let me see who uploaded it. Because I, I, yeah, I might recognize that. Yep, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, oh I my know gosh, that, that tornado is phenomenal. The the audio is, is what does it for me. The audio in that video is... <sighs> Now, uh, Adam, have I know you still live in Tennessee. I remember you talking about Murfreesboro earlier in the uh, the episode. But, but have you ever had any other notice notable like Dixie chases? Cause I'm sure, I knew remember talking to you in Stormtrack and you saying that you lived in Dixie for quite a while. Um, 
Now talk about your past dicks experiences since we're on kind of the subject. That was really about it. I mean, chasing Dixie sucked for me. <laughs> Even when I was living in Tennessee, most of my success was out here on the plains. Yeah. I, I, I say, like, it for Dixie, I mean, you have to have, you know, like, Brandon Payne, you know, like like you, or, you know, you have the Marcus Reynolds. Like, it seems like the people down there that live down there are have, like, a natural innate ability to score big tornadoes, if that makes any sense. Like, if you have a plane to chase, like, take Shane Adams, for example. Shane's a great dude. Plop him in Dixie and, you know, plop, you know, bred a deer on the same storm. It would just be two different outcomes. I mean, you know, it's like... It feels like Dixie Chasers have a like natural innate ability to score big tornadoes down there. Well, you know, it's like the rest of us that live in the Midwest or Plains just can't do it. But, you know, I can yeah. say where credit's due. Like, people like Brandon and Brett, like, yeah, Brandon lives in Ohio. But, my goodness, he goes down there, like, every year. But he's when, when you do it enough, you just get used to doing it and you know what to do. And, you know, it's it's just an entirely different ball game. I've chased it once and uh it's probably the last time i'll do it i say that and i'm sure i'll go down no, there again yeah there's no way but, yeah uh brendan did did you chase I on uh, on march whenever i moved out here sorry to step on you mm -hmm. but i said that the last time yeah, when i moved out here i said i was never chasing dixie alley again i ended up chasing louisiana on that moderate risk day in april 2019 of course of course yeah yeah it's yeah i'm sure i will again um, but no, Brent, so March 17th earlier this year, did, did you chase that day? Uh, I did not. I was in, uh, I was actually in basic training for, Oh, okay. All right. Cause, gotcha. Yeah. I joined, I joined the air force in February. So I gotcha. was in basic training from February to April 1st. So I actually had no idea that it happened the day it happened, but I remember, uh, what I remember about that day was every week we get a phone call, uh, like every Saturday we get like a 10 minute phone call home. Um, and first person I called was Marcus, Marcus Reynolds. So I wanted, I wanted to catch up with what was going on back home. And he was like, yeah, so you missed the 45% hatch and a 30% hatch in Alabama. And that, that pissed me off because of course it happens, you know, when I leave. Of course. And what was even a bigger kick in the gut was I asked him what city's been hit. And he, first one he said was Helena. And I live in, my dad lives in Helena. I'm from Helena, uh, Alabama. I say Birmingham, but that's just generalized. I'm from Helena. And I was like, are you talking about like Shelby County, Helena? He's like, yeah. And I immediately hung up and called my dad to make sure that he was all right. And he said he was fine. But the the Eagle Point tornado, uh, the big one from March 25th that went through uh, south of Birmingham, um, that touched down on my street, the street that I live on, that tornado touched down in the amphitheater that I would always go to as a kid to watch movies. That wow. There's a waterfall there. I'd always hang out there. And it took out all the trees, destroyed uh, some of the beef O'Brady's. Uh, I'm surprised it didn't take out the waterfall. But, yeah, I just I remember sitting there with, like, a minute left on the phone, just, like, so pissed off that it find like, when I leave home, for good, that's when, you know, the tornadoes are like, all right, we'll start coming around, you know, where you live. But well, it's, I, it's I, March I and Dixie. What more can you expect, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, the disappointment of April 2020 was or pretty much mm. just the disappointment that, you know, I've been dealing with ever since I started chasing. I've, I've been on 20 or 30 chases, but I really haven't had, like, the best of luck. I've gotten structure. You know, I've gotten – I intercepted what was left of zeta i chased some of delta but i really haven't had that great a look but i know for a fact if i would have been in alabama if i would have been home on march 25th i definitely would have been on that uh eagle point ef3 yeah. um but hey i mean that's the sacrifice i was going to make um i wanted to do this to you know continue my career with meteorology so I guess there's well, like some good that comes out of it. Yeah, I just want to say yeah. thank you for, you know, joining the Air Force. I mean, I definitely probably could have joined in the military, but I just want to say thank you for your service and uh, for what you did. Yeah. I would say that's definitely, you know, joining the military is definitely the ultimate sacrifice. Um, 
you know, given, you know, protection of your life and serving your country, you know, it's just, that's, that's, that's probably the best as you can, you know, be as a human being. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's air force. So it's a little different. We're, we operate <laughs> a little force. differently than, yeah, we operate a little bit differently than any other branches. I kind of feel like I'm in college right now. Yeah, that's, that is definitely a good way to put it, but well, yeah. That, shout out to Brandon Kopik. that He got amazing video on that. I think, I'm pretty sure it's still pinned on his Twitter, um, but he blew up on that footage. Um, that, I remember him only having like 400 followers on Twitter that day um, or in the morning. And after that, he shot up around 2,000 followers. Like, it was crazy on how that happened. Like, he was obviously a still mm. well-known chaser, but like, in the Twitter community, like, oh my goodness, like he like, you know, quadrupled his amount almost on for followers. But yeah, th- you know, it's like, holy I, crap, I kind of want to chase Dixie, but I, I'm also kind of worried. Um, I know my boy James chased with you, uh, Johnny, on the, the Moundsville day. I was so happy. I was, yeah, the day everybody forgot about. <laughs> I was borderline. Every, like 17th happened, and then the 25th happened, and then everybody forgot about the 17th, which I mean. Rightfully so. It wasn't that. It wasn't that great. Um, but then again, considering Dixie's standards, we had slow moving storms, rain free bases, and visible tornadoes. I mean, it's Dixie. What more can you ask for? We were on that storm for like three hours. Wow. Saw two tornadoes. I mean, would you, would you say that the seventeenth underperformed? Would you say it underperformed? Because like I wasn't here for it, so I, I don't know oh, yeah. what it was like synoptically or like chase wise. Like I I don't really know much about the twenty the twenty fifth or the seventeenth. Like what were those days like? Would you call them bust or um, what was your experience with it? Well, the the ceiling was so high for those days because they they were both high risk days. Um, I don't I don't know what the the was was the twenty fifth. Uh, did that peak at forty five percent? Tornado risk. No, I don't that remember. Was, that was a thirty percent. Was it a thirty? So yeah. the seventeenth was at forty five. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it was a last minute upgrade that they did that for too. Um, and it was because of the warm sector. Um, the seventeenth had a massive open warm sector, and um, there was clearing in the whole warm sector and throughout the whole morning. I and mean, the sun was peeking through. I mean. When, when you see the sun beating down in Dixie on a high-risk day, that, that always puts a pit in your stomach, you know? So that set the expectations pretty high. Um, and so we got our warm sector supercells. It was pretty messy, but it still worked. Um, there was uh, the northern cell that started near Livingston and ended up going towards, like, Tuscaloosa in that way. And then you had the southern one that started near Waynesboro, Mississippi, I believe, and that was the one that produced the, the Silas tornado. Uh, Demopolis tornado, the southern one, but that was it. It was that was supposed to be like a prelude uh, in the, the the warm sector round, and then there was supposed to be the main round when the front came through later in the evening, and on the seventeenth we're talking about again, and that just didn't happen. Uh, we we blasted west after getting our tornadoes, and we were in eastern Mississippi, kind of west of uh, of Meridian. And we have like three supercells coming our way, but they're elevated. They look like junk. Um, we had like a really nice CG barrage, uh, cloud to ground lightning barrage from from the last storm. But the whole second round, the, the round that everybody was scared of, never happened. Never happened. And the tornadoes that did happen were generally weak. I mean, they were smaller EF1s. I don't think there were a couple EF2 tornadoes that day. So in terms of intensity, um, the tornadoes were long tracked for the most part, but they were not strong. So why why do you think that happened? You know, some most some of the people I talked to said that they think there was like an unseen EML that day. Um, I I don't remember the specifics of of why it didn't reach uh, it didn't reach the full potential. Um, but I remember there being a generally a bigger a bigger EML than usual. That's for sure. I mean, when you have an EML in Dixie, that's just that's a bunch of problems right there. Because um, yeah. I mean, you just you you fear for the people that live there, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I I I, w- I wish I could go into that, but I I honestly I forget 
Um, I know I just, I just commented on the 17th being a forgotten Dixie day, but yeah, honestly, I, I forget why that day didn't live up to its potential. I will say, what was, what was Twitter like that day? Oh, it was hectic. I, I, was, oh, I don't I'll know. I, I, uh, man, Twitter just, I don't Wait. get on Twitter much anymore. I yeah. post on Twitter. I don't browse Twitter much anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm kind of the same way. I mean, all I really do is, I mean, I talked to, you know, a couple <clears> of chasers, <throat> including Brandon. Now that's probably, that's probably the only way I've only talked to Brandon through there, but there's a couple other chases I talked to on there. Um, I don't really, I mean, it's weather Twitter. We know how it is. We can get, that's a whole other podcast we could talk about. I'm sure we'll, that's going to be a podcast episode. We need like five yeah. hours for that. Oh yeah. That could be a 24 hour <laughs> one. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's just, you know, that day was crazy. I remember waking up that day. I didn't have work or anything. And I was so mad that day. The only reason was I remember I DM'd you Johnny about that day. Um, saying that I was going to go with you guys. And, of course, my parents turned down at the last second. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was stupid because it's just like, well, they let me go halfway across the country, but we won't talk about that. Anyway, by myself. So, you know, anyway, it's like I was watching that day. I was praying James would get a tornado on that day and you guys would get one. I, I You know, before that, I wanted James Dude. to get a, Yeah. I want to get I – James get, got his first tornadoes too. So his first tornado was a wedge in Dixie. That that's awesome, and I was, <laughs> yeah. when he posted that image, and you know I heard that video where he's like, "Let's go!" and he was screaming. That was awesome, man. And I, you know, I didn't really scream a lot on camera with Kim. Um, I, I found out with tornadoes and stuff, I'm very quiet. If you watch my Kim video, I was very quiet. I was just like, "Tornado!" So on much the better. Yeah. Like, tornado on the ground. But after that, like on the drive to the hotel, I was like. Oh, but Carl, like, went like this, and I was so hyped, and, you know. Yeah, I was excited. And Yeah, you, know, you got to let it all out. You know? Oh, yeah, you got to. And, you know, I was so happy for him because, you know, with 2020 being 2020, and, you know, it, you guys were very deserving of a tornado uh, on that day. So, you know, you guys were at the right place at the right time, made a good forecast. And I'll say for Twitter, you know, on the Twitter side, he posted that image of what you talked about. Um, very, you know, the sun was beating down. You know, with Dixie setups, even on the bigger days, you know, the sun usually it, it wasn't as out as like what it was. It's usually really cloudy, um, very you know, you know. Well, you just have you have do. so much moisture down there, and not as much of a strong EML, so you don't have a lot of that dry air revealing more of the atmosphere, and you just have so much just moisture everywhere yeah, down it, there. It, it's so saturated. Yeah, and it's just like that's why cloud cover don't you know matter half the time when you're down there. I know a lot of people on Twitter that day were like, oh, cloud, before the uh, cloud cover, uh, or no, before the sun peeped out, everyone was talking about cloud cover, but a lot of people don't realize when you have that much high moisture in Dixie, sometimes that don't even matter um, compared to all the plains in the Midwest where that in some, some dimensions. It does, it, 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 it does and it doesn't, but at the same time, when you do get clearing, when you do get the sun peeking down uh, on days like that, yeah, that's, that's like I said, like that's when it gets a, when you get a pit in your stomach, you know? Um, we, we were driving on the way towards like Meridian area and I think it was around nine, 10 AM, literally clear blue skies. Like that's to see that on the morning of a high risk day in Dixie. That's, that's insane. I mean, how often does that happen? Yeah. And I remember in James's video, you were talking like you had that voice and you know, when you were doing that narration of the day, I was just like. You know, I, I was watching that video, mm -hmm. and I was just like, man. And I seen James yeah. that day. I was like, holy crap. And, of course, the weather weenies on Twitter were flipping out. Like, oh, my God. You know, and, you know, it's just like, jeez. It was just one of them days. But, yeah. I, you know, I'm interested to see what Dixie does this coming up winter and fall. Um, hopefully, I'll have enough chasing opportunities to go down there and chase. Um, but who knows what's, you know, what's going to bring. I know Ohio has been ramping up here recently. Thank God. It's about time. So Ohio has been dead. It was, I would say, the worst severe season ever. Yeah. Ever. Yep. Until until June eighteenth, and then okay, yeah, fine. You know, we get some photogenic tornadoes in in Indiana and Ohio. That's cool and all. And I missed it, of course. I, I was so sad. You don't realize when I was with the entire group, I was like, man, we need Johnny here or something. Like, <laughs> but you know. As we said earlier, patience is, you know, patience is part of the process. And, you know, yeah. I, I've always had this saying, especially when I'm chasing, you know, 
for those, you know, who have patience, you know, things will, you know, eventually happen to them. And I forget the exact quote, but, you know. Patience, it pays off. It definitely yeah, pays off. It always pays off. Um, just got, you know, just got to be patient. So Stay on your storm. Don't bail too early. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, that's another I wish podcast. I wish I could go back and tell myself that. That's a that's a whole other podcast. Oh, yeah, there's there's so many chases. We I'm sure we <laughs> all have so many chases where we can go back. Like, come on, stupid! Why'd you do that? You know, well, you just bad decision after bad decision. It's I could have like three or four tornadoes under my belt right now if I just wouldn't have been. Oh, oh hey, dumbass. hey, we can talk about our most or talk about our 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 greatest chases. Let's talk about our most like our biggest busts, oh, our no. worst chases. How about that? Yeah. Oh my god. I'll start off. I'll start that off right away. Um August twenty fourth, twenty sixteen. You wait. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh shit. Well, before we start, I never wait. knew chase that day. I never knew until Oh I didn't. I drove out there, saw like saw the line coming in from like in, uh, uh Illinois. I'm like this looks like garbage. So I went home. Oh no. Yeah. Yep, I went home. And it was like I, I was Don't uh, that day. I was, uh, I hadn't really chased a whole lot. Like, I didn't, I basically looked at the SPC. I was like, oh, there's a slight risk over there. Okay, I'm I'm going to go chase a slight risk, you know? Ha <laughs> ha. Um, I had, like, my local Fox 8, Cleveland Fox 8 uh, app as radar. Oh, and I was man. using that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I was so out of touch back then, man. It was crazy. I get to Kokomo, Indiana. Got hit by an EF3 later in the day. But I was in Kokomo, Indiana. I got there, looked at the storms out west, and I was like, this is what's coming my way? This is garbage. I'm going home. I went home, and I missed several tornadoes, wedge tornadoes, <laughs> all over the place. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, that by far was like my biggest, biggest bust of all time, for sure. All right, Adam, go ahead. What was your, I would say what was your biggest bust day of your career? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, so many, right? Because we all have so many. Yeah. Well, I mean, I busted on more in 2013, although that's not my worst bust. Well, a lot um, of people busted that day too, though. Eva, Oklahoma, 2016, that one still smarts. Mm. But that's not my worst Probably Mangum. Mangum has to be mm. my all-time worst bust. Oh. Well, I, here's what's why crazy. is that? I was very to tell. I was very ask Adam about that day because um, I know you live in Oklahoma. Um, but yeah, go explain that day. Yeah. I was in Mangum about an hour, hour and a half before that tornado came through. Uh, my chase partner and I, we saw the storm in Texas. We were hearing tornado reports. We panicked, so we headed south. We crossed the river into Texas, and mm. at that point, it was going through its recycle phase. And we had no way of getting back into Oklahoma, and we missed the big show of the day. Mm. Wow. Man. I'll say a lot of people busted on that day, too, kind of. feels like cause a lot of people picked the northern target. I remember the Stillwater twin tornadoes on the KFOR stream. I remember Mike Morgan was saying, like, Folks, this isn't a weak tornado. This is a pretty significant tornado on the ground here. You can see the the couple. You know how Mike Morgan is, but he's a really good. Mm -hmm. guy, you know, but he was very serious that day. I remember a lot of people picked the northern uh, side of Oklahoma that day. Um, but also a lot of people picked the southern part. It was just, that day was just weird in total, in totality, I guess. But um, I'll say my worst bust. Man, there there was quite a few. I mean, a lot of people. I'll say, you know. A lot of the newer chasers come in to like, man, every day I chase, there's going to be something good. I will, I will roughly say around 78% of storm chasing, just there, it's not no fancy tube, you know what I mean? It's either a bust or something goes wrong. But, you know, it, it's always, for us, it's always the passion that keeps us going. Or at least, that, you know, that's what keeps us, me going, you know. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, the, the planes vacation was uh, a prime example. Now, keep in mind, I, I got a lot of good storms that week, but my initial goal was to get a tornado. Um, I know I kind of hold my standard high, but, you know, I, I, I was pretty passionate, uh, especially off the, after all the personal BS I w went through that year. I wanted to get my redemption, um, but eventually it ended up paying off. But, you know, 
I'd say the worst bus I've had was, man, I don't know. That that was a hard one. Um, I, I would be inclined to say probably that, probably the March 17th, uh, while I was supposed to go down with you guys, that backfired a whole, a whole lot. I would have seen two tornadoes with you guys. Um, mm, yeah. That, that was bad. Um, I'll say, uh, I hate to say this today, but probably 526 this year. That was bad. I was so mad at the hotel. Me and Marcus were just like, this. that's, that's, that's definitely top three bust for me for sure. But again, that did pay off kind of with a really cool looking supercell in uh, Kansas, uh, later that afternoon. That was really awesome to see. That was probably one of my favorite supercell structures of all time, actually. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's still definitely underperformed it. Considering number one, I was at Hayes. I hate to, I hate to say that. I those words coming out of my mouth, I hate it. Um, and then also the fact that me and Marcus was going to go to McCook, Nebraska, and set there. Um, that was a we were planning on that for two full days. We were like, okay, we're gonna go down there and we're all going to Nebraska. And the last second, we're like, nope, Kansas. So I guess you know, when in doubt, you stick to your first target. Well, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I the night before, um, I, I was kind of getting the same feeling. I was I was looking at um, at the the H triple R reflectivity guidance, just thinking like, you know, it's showing supercells going along like southern Nebraska. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, there's there's pro something's probably going to happen up there. You know, it's the plains. You know, something probably going to happen up there. But the main event's going to be Kansas. You know, that that's that's the main event. That's and um, Oh, I, I think part of it also has to do with, with group think. I mean, especially in this era of chasing where I would say the vast majority of us use radar scope, we see those red dots and we're like, okay, well, there's a huge grouping of red dots here. I should probably go there too. And you, you can mm -hmm. find success doing that, but if you don't know why you're there, well, you should probably do a little bit more forecasting and or yeah. at least learn more about forecasting. But no, I mean, I, I think I, I think group think had a lot to do with that. Like everybody and their brother was in Scott City, Kansas on that day. And it was like it almost felt like if you weren't targeting this area, you're a dumbass, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right. It, that's what it felt like. It felt like peer pressure. And it was, I mean, yeah. I didn't, I didn't target there because I saw everybody else there. I mean, I, I legitimately, you know, made a forecast with my friends and uh, we made the intent to start in Scott city. Um, I think so part, did about 300 other chasers. Yeah. Well, I think part of that day was, you know, was, I think it was just a multiple slew of issues. I mean, I've seen a few radar dots up in Nebraska, but like, you know, when me and Marcus was at the IHOP, we were forecasting, and, you know, mesoanalysis, you know, everything looked a lot better, synoptically speaking, in Kansas. Western Kansas looked like the play. It looked like, yeah, Nebraska could maybe get something, but the best chance was definitely Kansas. But you know, Nebraska looked too messy. Guidance, it, it just it, it looked too messy. We thought, you know, triple point, you know, too much moisture, two, uh, two points are too high, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, but uh, no. I just I thought that the Nebraska targets were going to be messy, and that's why I didn't want to. That's why I didn't want Chase there. Same thing for South Dakota on uh, what was that? They had the five percent in South Dakota. Was that the twenty third? Twenty third. Yeah, yeah, and they ended up getting a photogenic tornado up there. You know, it's what are you going to do? You know, <laughs> what can you do? Yep. That you I can put you can put so much merit into a forecast, and it, it sometimes it just won't matter. Mother Nature will not cooperate, yeah. and that's that's just a fact of storm chasing. On the subject of uh, dots on radar scope, I always keep mine turned off whenever I'm chasing. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot I of turn mine off that. sometimes, depending on you know just the the situation and whatnot, and other times I'll really turn the dots off. Know, I really don't want to know where other chasers are. I mean, if I was to run into them while I'm at my target, okay, cool. I somewhat have an idea that maybe I'm on the right track or not. Yeah. Right, and it's like, you know, with with the 526 day, a lot. I feel like the more peer pressuring wasn't because of the forecast. It was more along the lines of second guessing because not only me and Marcus, but you talked about, Johnny, about second guessing, driving up north and south. 
Oh my gosh, it felt like I was playing like whack. We went the north, the then south, then north, then south on 83 before we finally committed south. Yep, and me and Marcus are doing the exact same thing. Like on the morning supercell, we caught that beautiful, uh, that mothership. I forget where Yeah, that was over by Brewster or something, right? Yeah, Brewster, was, Kansas? Yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. But Yeah, yeah it was. We were, com we were, you know, me and Marcus were still like going like Nebraska, Kansas, Nebraska. And we were just like going up and down the interstate. And we were just like, oh my gosh. And we were just like, yeah. F it, we're going to Kansas. But in the pit in my stomach, I was like, you know, Nebraska don't look too half bad. And I was thinking about just saying, I'm sorry, Marcus, but I'm going to Nebraska. But I didn't just, I didn't do that. I didn't want to leave Marcus or anything. Yeah. But yeah, I'd say five, 526 is just a weird forecast. And it's like by the time mm -hmm. you second guessed, you've seen all the spotter dots and then. I'd say during this, the period of second guessing, that's when the peer pressure kicked in a little bit. Um, yeah. Because it's like, man, I see a lot of people contemplating on Twitter already, thinking about going north. And it's just, you've seen the, the spotter dots. It looks like a game of Pac-Man. you just seen everyone just going north, and it's just like, they're going like on a path. It's just like, man, what do you do? Uh, oh, I saw somebody on a, on, a, on a Discord server made a joke about, how i mean there there were probably three four maybe even 500 red dots uh, all in western kansas but they were all spread out from colby down to plains just all along 83 just red dots sprinkled everywhere and they they just made the joke of being like hmm, yeah this makes me happy this is hilarious because nobody knows what they're doing and i'm like Okay, that joke kind of hurts me a little bit, but <laughs> it is pretty funny because yeah. nobody knew. Nobody yeah. knew where to go. So, yeah. yeah. That was just an unfortunate day, but. Um, anyway. Hey, just, just an FYI, there, my phone is the same at. the situation that we were in, they would have no idea what to do. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, I think I'm probably going to wrap up the end of the podcast here. It's 937 already. Um, but and my phone's at 4%. Yeah. It started at 60, so. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say thank you guys for coming out. Uh, Adam, thanks for uh, being the uh, special guest today on the first episode. It was a great Yeah, episode. thank you, Adam. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it, Adam. Having you. Um, but um, I was thinking about making a schedule uh, for the rest of the co-hosts on here. I was thinking about making a schedule. Um, but, of course, with us having work, and, of course, I work random days as well. Um, I'm guessing we'll, I'll probably check in like a couple times every week, see if you guys are available. If not, we'll figure something out. But um, yeah, Adam, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, this will be the end of the podcast, and I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Um, if you did, um, just make sure you hit a like button. You know, I just want to see if you guys like the uh, episode and if you guys want more. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining in, and uh, I'll see you guys later.